Greetings to all of you, dear students. Welcome back. In this video, we shall be focusing on one of the most interesting applications of chi-square distribution called the independence of attributes. The test statistic that we saw in the previous application, namely goodness of fit, is slightly valid here. But as we are dealing with two attributes, the test statistic needs a slight reformation. So we shall first look into a little of theory of how we define these attributes. What do we mean by the observed and the expected frequencies and thereby go ahead to apply it in problems. So we start by considering two attributes, namely A and B where A is assumed to have R categories. So I've taken A along the rows, A1, A2, etc., AR, and B is assumed to be the second attribute having S categories. So I have B1, B2, etc., BJ, etc., BS categories. So totally, therefore, the data is divided into R into S classes. So to so many cells, or you call it classes. So a capital N is defined to be the total number of observations. So a representation of these observations, where we see O11, O12, etc., they all represent the observed value for a particular attribute A and a particular attribute B. For example, if I say O11, O11 is the observation in the first row, first column. That is with respect to attribute A1 and B1. So if I take it to be in general OIJ, it represents the observation in the ith row, which corresponds to the attribute AI, and the jth column, which corresponds to the jth column, or which is the BJ observation attribute. So likewise, when we add up the rows and columns, we get the total rows, which I have called it as R1, etc., RR, as we have R rows. And if I take up the column totals, I have C1, C2, etc., CS. So since I have S columns, so the total of all the Rs and the SCs should match and thereby giving us the total number of observations. So capital N is what is the total sum. So this is the observation and these are the attributes AR, A1, etc., AR, B1, etc., BS. This type of framing of a table is called the contingency table, which talks about or which explicitly defines what are the attributes and what are the observed values, what are the row totals, what are the column totals, and thereby what is the sum total. So we shall take this forward in my next slide. Next, we define the hypothesis, which we are now very well aware that we have two types of hypothesis, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So when we are dealing with two attributes, normally, whatever the attributes are, we assume them to be independent in the null hypothesis and they to be dependent in the alternate hypothesis. So that's how we define the null and the alternate hypothesis in all our problems here. We define the required level of significance, which could vary from problem to problem. But by default, we take it to be 5%. And now that we have seen that there are observed frequencies in the contingency table in my previous slide, it is now required to find out the expected values for each of the observed frequency. So we have now earlier seen that in a table where we had A1 and then we had B1 here, B2, etc., we had BS, so we called this O11, we called it O12, etc. We called it O1S and we called it to be R1. Similarly, along the rows, we had AR, so I write it as OR1, etc. And this column total was taken to be C1. So likewise, we filled up the remaining rows and columns. Now suppose according to this definition, how do we find the expected frequencies, meaning expected values of each of the observations that I am given? So suppose I want to find out the expected value of the observation O11. This is the observed value, but I want to know the expected value so that I could take the difference of the two. So what we do is we correspond it to the row total in which O11 is involved, and that is R1. And the column total in which O11 is involved, it is C1. 
so it becomes r1 into c1 divided by the total sum total which we call it as capital n so this will be the expected value of the first observation likewise if i want it for e, e of say i am talking about o12 so it will similarly be the row in which o12 lies is a sum total the row total is r1 the column total in which o12 lies is c2 divided by total n so this is how we calculate the expected values of each of the observed frequencies which we are given so eij in general therefore represents ri times cj divided by n just by generalizing what i have said here if it is 1 1 it is r1 c1 if it is 1 2 it is r1 c2 you can guess if it is r1 it is rr c1 so if it is ij it will simply be ri cj divided by the sum total or we can expand it in this manner eij equal to total of the observed frequencies in the i throw so in the i throw whatever is the total multiplied by the total of the observed frequencies in the jth column divided by the total number of cell frequencies which is capital n so this is the expanded version of these now we have all the observed values we have a formula to calculate the expected values of each of these observed frequencies let's see what to do next so having found the observed and expected frequencies in hand having having them ready made now comes the apply calculation of the test statistic so as i said the observed values are given we find the expected frequencies we take the difference of them we square it and divide it by the expected frequency so we find that that is the chi square statistic here and that follows the chi square distribution with r minus 1 into s minus 1 degrees of freedom where r is the number of categories in attribute a and s is the number of categories in attribute b and the check that we have is the double summation of oij should be equal to the double summation of eij so the sum totals of the observed and the expected must exactly match as per the number of decimal places we choose so this is the test statistic and i'm sure we all agree that now we know the procedure before we start with the working uh, first problem let's just quickly revise the working rule we define the null and alternate hypothesis i once again repeat that the null hypothesis that we choose for the independence of attributes is that the two attributes are independent and here they are dependent the desired level of significance as given in the problem or else we choose 5% by default then we use this particular formula in order to calculate the chi square value we have a chi square table as we have also seen it earlier so using the chi square table for this degrees of freedom we calculate the table value and if we find that the calculated value is less than the table value we accept h0 or we reject h0 accordingly so we shall now follow this particular working rule in some of the problems from my next slide this is the chi square table which we shall follow please note that you are given the degrees of freedom here and as per the level of significance that we require we shall uh, choose that respective level of significance to identify the table value which shall be further used for comparison by default it is 0.05 we shall use this particular column in general if nothing is specified in the problem let us start with problem number 1 a total number of 3759 individuals were interviewed in a public opinion survey on the proposal of conduction of center and state elections simultaneously of them 1872 were men and the rest were women 2257 individuals were in favor of the proposal 917 were opposed to it 243 men were undecided and 442 women were opposed to the proposal is there any association between gender and opinion so here when we read this question very carefully we find that there are two attributes namely gender and opinion when i am talking about gender we are talking about two two categories which are men and women so attribute a is gender 
So we have two categories under this particular attribute, which is men and women. And we have the other attribute as opinion. And the opinion here is the categories under this attribute shall be in favor, opposed and undecided. So we have three categories under this particular attribute. So it's very important to first recognize what are the two attributes and what are the categories under these attributes? And then, as I said, our H0 that we define shall be, there is no difference. That is, the two attributes are independent. So, gender and op opinion are independent or there is no association. As per the question given, there is no association between gender and opinion. That is, gender and opinion are independent. And H1 says they are dependent. There is no specific level of significance specified. So we take it as 5%. And here we write the two attributes. Please note that gender is our first attribute. Categories are men and women. Opinion is our second attribute. In favor, opposed and undecided are the three categories under that particular attribute. So we have a total of 3759. So we are seeing that the total number is 3759. So that makes it N is equal to, if we can write it down here itself, we have N is 3759. And then we say that 1872 are men. So when we are framing the contingency table, our contingency table will be men here and women here. If we are writing the uh, gender along the rows, and here if we write uh, the categories, in favor, opposed, and undecided in this particular uh, columns. So we are forming a contingency table. I will show it to you in my next slide explicitly. But for now, let's rewrite it this way. So we have total numbers. So when you add it up, so this will be the total number. This is your 3759. I'm sure you all agree. And now coming to 1872 were men. So that means total men who were in favor, opposed and undecided altogether, you have 1872 as men. So naturally, when you say the rest are women, we can write it as 3759 minus 1872. That will be women. Then when we have 2257 individuals were in favor. So in favor category is this totally men, women together is 2257. So this will be 2257. How many are opposed? 917 men and women together are opposing it. 243 men were undecided. So you see, men are undecided. So you have to look at the men category and undecided category and put 243 here. And there are 442 women were opposed. So under women and opposed, it will be 442. And now we have to fill up the rest. I am sure you can easily find out. It's a small, simple puzzle. So we want this total first. This total is 3759 minus 2257 minus 917. It will give me this. This minus 243 will give me this. Now the total minus the tick mark minus 442 will give me double tick marks. 2257 minus double tick mark will give me this star. 1872 minus star will give me a circle. So all the values are thereby known. So it's only trying to place them in such a way that the sum row totals and column totals match exactly. So now let me show you the exact table in my next slide. So as we discussed in the previous slide, this is the contingency table. Under gender, we have taken male, female along the rows. Under opinion, there are three categories which we have written in favor, opposed, undecided. All the pink that you see are the, are, is the data that was given to us in the problem. And the remaining, by subtracting, making the subtractions, we have found the remaining values as explained to you earlier. So the table is now perfect where the row totals and the column totals both match to give me back the n value. So these are all the observed values. And now thereby we have to find out the expected values. And as we discussed earlier in the theory, 
the expected value of a particular observation is equal to its corresponding row total multiplied by the column total divided by the total sum total which is n so when i am calculating e of the first cell which is 1154 look at the row total it is 1872 multiplied by its column total which is 2257 divided by the sum total which is 3759 i get a value then I move to E of 475, its row total is 1872, its column total is 917 divided by N, I get this. I have now rounded it off to two decimals so that correctly to two decimal places. So you can fix it to any number of places that you desire. In my complete video, I have fixed it to two decimal places. So in a similar manner, we have calculated for all the six observed values, these expected values. Now the check before we go ahead is to add all the expected values and ensure that you get exactly 3759. You get 0 0.00 if there are two decimals. Exactly if you fix it to two decimals or three or four as you desire, please ensure that the total is exact so that you will not deviate from your exact answer. So double sigma OIJ, as we see it's 3759. After finding the expected values, it should also be 3759, which matches exactly here. Next, we go ahead by for the calculation of the test statistic that we shall see in my next slide. Now we have found the observed and the expected values. We have the data completely with us. We shall now construct the table of finding out the difference, squaring the difference value, dividing each of them with the expected values, then getting the sum total as 19.03 here. And we normally check the table value here it's for r minus one we had two categories under gender and three categories under opinion so it's r minus one into s minus one so for two degrees of freedom from the chi square table if we see it matches with four five point nine nine we find that the calculated value is greater than the table value and so we reject h naught meaning the two attributes are not independent. That is, they are dependent. Gender and opinion are dependent. So that's the conclusion we make for the problem number one. On similar grounds, let's read problem two. Out of 1660 candidates who appeared for a competitive examination, 422 were successful. Out of these, 256 attended coaching classes and 150 of them came out successful. Examine whether coaching and success are associated. So a problem like this, again, defines two attributes. One is coaching and the other is success. Now, when I want to check out the categories under coaching, it would be attended, as he says, attended, and the others not attended. So under coaching, we have two categories, attended and non, not attended. And under success, we have successful and not successful. So they are the two categories of the, under the two attributes. And what is our H0? Coaching and success being the two attributes. Coaching and success are independent is our H0. And coaching and success are not independent is our H1. Again, we shall take 5% level of significance. So I have written here, see, coaching is success are the two attributes and attended, not attended are the categories under coaching, successful and not successful under the category success. So let's see now, what is the two-way contingency table? So we have written down the two attributes, coaching under the that categories, attended, not attended, under success, successful, not successful, all these pink numbers are given to us. So one, one, one is given, we could get the other by subtracting correspondingly. So we have completed the table in that manner. Then frame the expected frequencies of every cell by taking the row total multiplied by the column total divided by the total sum, sum total. 
and ensuring that the sum of all the expected frequencies coincides with the sum total which is here 1660 so observed values are all found expected values are all found and now we shall move in for the table so we are now substituting the values of o and e subtracting it squaring it dividing each by the expected frequency and getting the total of it that's the calculated value that's the test statistic now since we had here two categories under each attribute so it's 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 so as per the table it is 3.84 we find that the calculated value is greater than the table value so the in null hypothesis is rejected meaning coaching and success are not independent and thus we complete problem number two so problem number three goes this way if we look at calcad carefully the table is specified to us earlier we had to frame the table so let's read it a survey of music listeners preference under various age groups is given below is music preference influenced by age so music preference is one attribute and age is the other attribute so if you look at the table which is already given to us in the problem we don't have to prepare the table now under music preference the category is given to us is carnatic music film music and folk music so there are three categories and under age group we have 19 to 25 26 to 35 and above 36 so there are three age groups and there are three music preferences so our attributes are music preference and age so we shall proceed in a similar manner quickly so h naught says that music preference and age are independent and they are dependent is h1 we have taken five percent level of significance now we can directly move on to framing the expected values as the table is already mentioned to us so as the table is already given to us in the problem our role was only to get the totals the row totals the column totals and check whether what is the value of capital n and then use our formula to find out the expected frequencies we have nine observations so therefore we had nine expected frequencies and to ensure that the sum total of all the expected frequencies matches with the capital n given in the table it does match exactly here also now the next step would be to construct the final table so we have now constructed the final table o i is mentioned in the first column e i is the totals match take the difference square them divide each of them by e i 99.4 by 70.03 and so on get the total so this is your calculated value of chi square let's match it with the table value and see how to conclude the result now we have three categories under each attribute so it becomes two into two four degrees of freedom which goes to 9.49 for five percent level so we obviously find that the calculated value is very much greater and therefore h naught is rejected meaning music preference and age are dependent they are not independent that's the conclusion that we make even in problem three let's do one more before we wind up this video the last problem that we shall take up here let's read it the following table gives for a sample of married women the level of education and marriage marriage adjustment score can we conclude that level of education and adjustment in marriage are independent so it's very clear again the table is directly given to us similar to problem number three with respect to education the level of education which is one of the categories he has given us sorry, one of the attributes he has given us three categories college high school and medium school and adjustment in marriage where the score is taken to be very low low high very high so there are four categories under score 
and or adjustment in marriage. And there are three categories under level of education. So we shall continue in a similar manner. And we shall first define H0 as level of education and adjustment in marriage are independent. And they are dependent, we shall call it H1. We shall take 5% level of significance and thereby proceed by taking up the row and column totals. So we have started the problem by taking up the row totals, the column totals, and check that it matches with as 435. Then computed all the expected frequencies as we have three rows and four columns, we have 12 values. So we have calculated 12 expected frequencies. Ensure that once we add, we should get exactly 435. You can check it matches exactly. And therefore, now observed and expected frequencies are ready for the final test calculation. So this slide shows the observed values in the first column, the expected values where the total matches with the total observed values. That's very important. Then take up the difference of the two values, square them divide each of them by the expected value and get the total and this will be the value of the test statistic which has to be now compared with the table value so we find that the table value that we are calculating will have 3 minus 1 into 4 minus 1 degrees of freedom as under education we had three categories and under marriage score we had four categories so they'll buy six degrees of freedom which goes up to 12.59, but the calculated value still continues to be greater than the table value. So H0 is rejected and thus concluding that the level of education and adjustment in marriage are dependent. So these are some four problems. We had two problems, we had to construct the table, two problems where the table was already constructed, but the procedure continues to be the same very highly applicable, the interesting type of problems, but very useful in our day, daily day-to-day -day analysis. And thereby completing this particular application of chi-square distribution, I hope it's clear. You all found it comfortable to understand. You may try some more problems from picking out similar problems from various standard statistical books and try out in case you have any Good sort of questions, kindly do not hesitate to place in the comment section so that I can refer back and get back to you to solve any of your doubts or issues. So thank you for being so patient and listening to the entire video. So we will meet again in the next video, which shall focus on t-test, which is used for small samples. So we shall look at what is large sample, what is a small sample, and then thereby look at t-test, where which will be used to solve small samples and analyze certain very important and make some very important conclusions. So see you in my next video, and I hope you shall practice all the four problems and similar problems that you can pick out from various other books. Thank you. God bless you all.